This is a Mac Studio, and this is the old Mac Mini, the one from last year with the M2 chip, and this is the new one with the M4. And it is absolutely fantastic. So much so that I actually got another one, which is currently Velcro to the back of my Apple Studio display. Literally just stuck on the back here, turning this into in my own kind of iMac. The reason I have two though is because this is the base spec, the cheapest one for 599, that's the same in pounds or dollars, which gets you the new M4 chip, 16 gigs of memory and 256 storage. Whereas this guy has the highest spec M4 Pro, 48 gigabytes of memory and also a terabyte of storage. So this is the highest spec one. And the big question for a lot of people will be, is it worth paying to go from the M4 to the M4 Pro? Also, how does it compare to the previous M2 Mac Mini, and also I've got the absolute top spec Mac Studio here with the M2 Ultra, 192 gigabytes of memory and eight terabytes of storage. This thing is an absolute beast. So I'm gonna be comparing all four of these to see which is fastest and well, which you should buy. I have to say though, I think this might just be my favorite new Apple product since they introduced the M1 chip and their Macs back in 2020. It's tiny, it's fast, it's actually really good value, especially as they now spec all Macs and MacBooks with 16 gigs of memory. Until now, you had to pay 200 quid extra to upgrade from eight gigs, which I've always recommended people do. Now you can either use that money to double the storage, perhaps to 512, or since it's a desktop, you could just buy a terabyte SSD for 100 pounds and plug it in the bag for all your bigger files and videos and work projects. Bear in mind though, for 599, this is all you're getting. You don't get a keyboard or mouse or trackpad. You don't get a monitor, of course. So you are gonna have to build your system around it, your setup, unless you already have one, which case you can just, you know, plug it in. And actually this does use the same power as the previous gen. So if you already have an M1 or M2 Mac Mini, it's literally just unplug and replug and you're good to go. I'm literally just playing with this thing. It's so small. We're talking five inches by five inches and two inches deep. So it is actually a little bit taller than the previous Mac Mini. In fact, quite a bit taller, but the overall footprint is roughly half what it was before. It definitely takes cues from its big, big brother, the Mac Studio, in terms of overall aesthetic. We've got some I.O. at the front here, a couple of USB-Cs, which basically replaced a couple of USB-A's that we get on the back. Uh, so now we have two USB-3's, Type-C on the front, uh, and three Type-C's on the back, although only these are Thunderbolts. So if you're gonna plug in your monitor, fast hard drives, hubs, then you want to use these three. The front two are best just for uh, connecting your mouse and keyboard or slower accessories that don't need the speed. That would have been nice to see if these had been Thunderbolt as well. And of course, if you spec the higher end version with the M4 Pro chip, these are also upgraded from Thunderbolt 4 to Thunderbolt 5, going from 40 gigabits per second up to 80, which can dynamically boost to 120 with Thunderbolt 5. So you can actually support two 8K 120 screens or three 4K 144 hertz screens via one Thunderbolt 5 port. Although you will need a hub as well to connect them all together, but that can all go into one port. It's incredible. And also all new Mac minis support up to three external displays. Previously, it was only two unless you went for the Pro version, the M2 Pro. Now you get three screens with all versions of this. We also get an HDMI 2.1 gigabit ethernet, which you can upgrade to faster 10 gigabit if you have crazy fast internet speeds. Although for me, and I think most of us, it's probably not worth paying a hundred quid more. Three and a half mil headphone jack, we've got the power of course, and also some pretty basic built-in speakers. Still Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3, no change in terms of the connectivity there. We also don't get any USB type A ports anymore. They've been replaced with the type C's on the front and also no SD card reader like you get on the Mac Studio. What we do have though, and what seems to be the biggest issue people seem to have with the new Mac mini is this button placement. It's a uh, power bottom, if you will. It's right there on the back left corner. It's a bit of a silly design. It's not a problem at all. How often do you actually press and hold the power button on your Mac? Very, very rarely. And you know, you can and just press it. It's a bit awkward, but it doesn't matter at all. Good news though, is that this is actually Apple's first ever fully carbon neutral Mac which actually is a nice plus. So there's three key selling points of these new Mac minis. One of course is the size and being this small, you can literally fit it in a jacket pocket. You can throw in your backpack and it just kind of inspires you to have a more unique setup, whether you're pairing it with an Apple Vision Pro, if you're one of the five people out there who bought one like I did, uh, especially now with the latest software where you can uh, share your Mac desktop to it and also have ultra wide screens. It's actually really, really cool. And again, given how small this is, you could take it with you to a coffee shop and plug it in and look like a bit of a tool wearing this but it's a good option. Or as I've shown you earlier, you could affix it to your display, whichever one you like. I don't know if I would recommend this Velcro setup. It's literally just a piece of Velcro double-sided that I've unstuck and then stuck to the back of the monitor. 
I don't know if I'm going to trust this for the long haul, but it's a bit of a proof of concept. And there are actually a lot of people who are 3D printing brackets to do this. It's also much lighter this year. This is about one and a half pounds down from 2.6. So for these under desk, behind monitor, weird setups, that lower weight definitely helps. You've just got so much more flexibility when it's something this size. And also, as I say, starting from 599, which, spoiler alert, and I'm going to come to it at the end, is probably the one you should go for. As I say, base model, M4 chip. And we're looking at higher clock speeds. Also, I think the bigger deal for most of us is the fact that they've upped the memory to 16 gigabytes across the board. And as we will see, comparing it to the base spec from last year with eight gigabytes, that actually is probably the bottleneck for most people. So thus is last year's Mac Mini. We've gone from the M2 to the M4. We've gone from eight to 16 gigs of memory. We've got up to 64 gigabytes of memory. And as I mentioned earlier, you can now output to three displays, whichever model you go for. Plus we have faster Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt 5, depending on the spec. So more compact, very cute design, really good value, and also solid performance. So let's get into a few numbers. I spent my weekend basically benchmarking all four of these Mac Studios to get a sense of which is the best spec and just how this compares. So let's get nerdy for a second and talk about some numbers. Now versus last year's base spec M2 Mac Mini, the new base M4 Mini is between 40 and 70% faster in these single and multi-core tests. Jumping up to the high spec M4 Pro doesn't add a ton in terms of single core, but it's significantly faster in multi and almost double in Cinebench. I didn't expect that. But then look at that. In three of the four tests, the Mac Studio is actually slower than the M4 Pro Mac Mini. Switching over to the graphics side of these benchmarks, and it actually doesn't give me the option to run the GPU Cinebench test on last year's Mac Mini, but in the Geekbench OpenCL test, we're looking at a 20% uptick versus last year. But look at this, the jump from the M4 to the M4 Pro is huge in terms of graphics. Although here, the Mac Studio with its 76 core GPU, because it's essentially two Macs fused together, is almost twice as fast again in Geekbench. In the Blender benchmark, which is a bit more GPU oriented, we're looking at about a 60-ish percent uptick versus last year, although perhaps a bit of an anomaly there with Junk Shop 914%, although I run all these tests three times, and that's what I was getting with the M2 Mini. Again though, we are seeing quite significant gains going up to the M4 Pro between 64 and 79%, which in two of the three tests actually outperforms the Mac Studio despite its much beefier GPU. But then in my real world Blender render test, you can see quite a nice progression of the time going down as you go left to right. In Puget Bench, which gives us a kind of real world benchmark of Photoshop Premiere Pro DaVinci, unfortunately the old M2 Mac Mini just failed or crashed or did not finish in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, so I don't have that data, but it was almost twice as fast in Photoshop. But again, M4 Pro, look at that, 109% faster in Premiere Pro, 67% faster in DaVinci. And finally, with my real world Premiere Pro export test, where I've got a 10 minute 4K60 export, the jump between the M4 and the M4 Pro is actually much more significant than the M2 to the M4. Couple of games for you, if that's your thing. Tomb Raider did not run on Mac Mini with the M2, it just crashed every time. But Total War Pharaohs did jump up 60% year on year. But then the M4 Pro, over twice as fast in Tomb Raider, with the Mac Studio taking the win for games. And last but not least, Geekbench AI. This is quite a simplistic benchmark, but this was tested using the neural engine on each chip. And we are seeing the biggest gains come from the jump from the M2 to the M4, with a small improvement with the M4 Pro, only in single precision. But then the Mac Studio's neural engine is significantly slower. But because of the higher clock speeds and just how powerful this is, and also physically in a smaller form factor, you know, there is less room for heat dissipation and you've just got this single fan exhausting at the bottom, it does get quite warm. But it's not really a problem. This is a desktop computer. You haven't got it on your lap like a laptop. And actually my MacBook gets hotter and louder than this does. To be fair though, most of the time it runs cool and quietly. You actually barely hear the fan. Only in really demanding sustained workloads does that fan eventually wear up. And only to a slightly annoying level when you have the M4 Pro version and put it in high power mode. Most of the time, it's not a problem. Although interestingly, if you do spec the M4 Pro chip, then you get access to the higher power mode in the energy settings, which essentially lets the fans wear up to a higher RPM, so it's louder, it also get warmer, uh, but then you get better sustained performance. So if you are rendering, doing an export, doing something that takes quite a long time, gaming perhaps, then you might want to put it into this higher power mode. By default, it's automatic and it can switch between them by itself. Not something you have to worry about, but again, only accessible to you if you expect the M4 Pro, which also brings with it Thunderbolt 5 as well.
and breathe. My main takeaways are that this is an incredible chip, even just the base M4. And I think the value for money at 599 is incredible, especially now that you get the 16 gigs of memory. Because as I say, I think for most people who are still rocking an old Mac mini, whether you have an M1 or an M2 version, the eight gigabytes of memory is probably your biggest bottleneck. What I didn't expect though, was how much of an improvement the M4 Pro version of the Mac mini would be, particularly in terms of graphics. So if you are gonna use this as your main desktop and you are editing videos, you're rendering, developing, you know, if you use the GPU, the M4 Pro version is still a very good deal. For most people, just stick with the base one, 599. For the vast majority of us, this is more than you need and will last you for years and years and years. You get all the Apple intelligence stuff, as you do, to be fair, with anything going back to the M1 series, but it's more future-proof. You've got more memory for it to utilize, so it's not gonna bog you down as much. Now, obviously, this is quite a nice setup, but it's also quite expensive, and you don't have to spend that kind of money. You could buy one of these for 600 pounds. You could buy a mouse and keyboard. It doesn't have to be Apple's ones for, I don't know, 100 quid and then pair it with a 250, 300 pound 4K 27 inch monitor. You could then use your iPhone as the webcam. You could get a pair of speakers and you can build yourself your own little, I don't know, iMac alternative for about a third less. iMac started around 12.99, the same price as this with the M4 Pro spec. But also remember that Apple isn't the only one who makes mini PCs, and there are some really good alternatives if you need to run Windows or have access to a bigger gaming library, but certainly they're not as cheap and I would argue not as refined as a Mac mini. This new Mac mini might just be my favorite tech product of the year, I'm serious. What do you think? Are you gonna pick one up? And what's your setup gonna be? Thank you so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, a cheeky like and subscribe would be fantastic. Any questions at all, drop a comment, 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 and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.